Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I am taste testing and reviewing all four flavors of Goodles Macaroni and Cheese. I've been interested in this company since it launched last year because one of the founding partners is actress Gal Gadot, who you might know as Wonder Woman. I love her, so I trusted her when she said this mac and cheese would be gooder. I'm starting with Shell a Good Shell Pasta with Aged White Cheddar Sauce. The first step is boiling six cups of water. Here you will see me accidentally knock over the box and have to clean up before I continue cooking. This is the shell pasta. The next step is adding it to the boiling water. You can cook 9 to 11 minutes. I like my pasta more al dente than soft, so I started right down the middle with 10 minutes, but ended up going with 9 minutes. The next step is draining the pasta. Now it's time for the packet of aged white cheddar cheese sauce. I added one fourth cup of milk off screen, stir well and serve. First up we have Shella Good, which is the red box. I think all the sauce went to the bottom, so I'm gonna need to mix it up because it doesn't really smell like anything. Well, it got really hard. Not hard, but break it up because the first few were sitting while it's cooking, so. Maybe I should have tried them fresh. Whoop. I can't double dip on this because I'm sharing with my family after, so. Got a plastic spoon. Okay, let's get one good big bite. That's really good. It tastes like a white cheddar mac and cheese. I don't know if the flavor's more intense when it's super hot, but it's just right. I don't usually use the entire packet, so I thought it was going to be too much, but it's not. White cheddar flavor is great. I like the noodles. I will say, if you've ever had an alternative noodle, 
it does have that taste to it. Like, hold on, let me see what it's made out of. Like, it has flour in it and wheat protein, but there's something about it. I think it's the chickpeas, and I love it. I've had straight up chickpea pasta before and I really like it, but I just thought I'd mention it because maybe some people will not like that. <laughs> I guess what I'm trying to say is you can tell it's made out of something else. I wouldn't say it tastes exactly like a macaroni and cheese. You could tell the noodle is made out of an alternative ingredient, but I love chickpeas, so it works for me. <laughs> This is the nutrition and ingredient info, as well as a comparison to original Kraft mac and cheese. Feel free to pause and read if you're interested. Next up is Cheddi Mac, which is cheddar macaroni and cheese the classic we all know and love. The cooking instructions are mostly the same. Boil six cups of water. Here's the macaroni noodles. Now add them to the boiling water. I once again made a full of myself by dumping in the cheese packet. Please do not do that. Cook for eight to nine minutes. I went with eight. Drain the macaroni. Add one fourth cup of milk and the packet of cheddar cheese sauce. Stir well and serve. Next up is Cheddi Mac, which is the greenish teal kind of box. This one is the one that's supposed to be just like your typical macaroni. So let's test it out and see if it's just like Kraft. It's very orange. Like very orange. I'm going to try and mix it up. I could microwave these, but they're not cold. It's just they've been sitting a little bit. Okay, I can't double dip, so gotta get a nice big bite. Not bad. It definitely has the cheddar flavor. It's, I don't know if intense is the right word, but it's not as creamy as like a Kraft mac and cheese. This is the one that I might experiment with less of the cheese packet and maybe a little more milk. And also eating this one when it's piping hot might be better. I still really like it, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm just thinking about other people. The 
cheese packet really clings to the noodles and makes them orange. And so that's why I'm saying it's not as like creamy and yellow like craft. It just maybe intense is the word I'm looking for. It's just yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that comparison makes sense. This is the nutrition and ingredient info, as well as a comparison to original Kraft mac and cheese. Feel free to pause and read if you're interested. Next up is Twist My Parm. Spiral pasta with Asiago and Parmesan cheese sauce. All the cooking instructions are the exact same as Shella Good. I boiled six cups of water. Here's the spiral pasta. Now add it to the boiling water. I feel very proud because I didn't have any mishaps this time around. Cook for nine to 11 minutes. I went with nine. Drain the pasta. Add one fourth cup of milk and the packet of Asiago and Parmesan cheese sauce. Stir well and serve. Next step is twist my parm, which is a parmesan and asiago flavor. And this is spiral pasta. We've had shells and we've had macaroni. So this is spirals. Oh. This one smells the strongest out of all of them. I can actually smell the cheeses okay here we go good bite so good this one might actually be my favorite so far it's really good you can definitely taste the white cheese which i love it's similar to the shells if I had them back to back, I might be able to, to tell more of a difference. But at the moment, I can't really distinguish between the different white cheeses. I think the only reason this is my favorite is because it's the creamiest so far. And that might be because it's the warmest. I still think it's my favorite so far. This is the nutrition and ingredient info as well as a comparison to original Kraft mac and cheese. Feel free to pause and read if you're interested.
Last but not least is Mover and Shaker, inspired by the dish Cacio e Pepe, hopefully I didn't butcher that, which literally translates to cheese and pepper. This is macaroni pasta with Romano and Parmesan cheese sauce and black pepper. Boil six cups of water. This is the macaroni pasta. Now add it to the boiling water. Cook for eight to nine minutes. I went with eight. Drain the macaroni. Add one fourth cup of milk and the packet of Romano and Parmesan cheese sauce, which includes black pepper. Stir well and serve. The fourth and final box is Mover and Shaker. I believe this is macaroni with pepper in it, which is something my family's always done. Anyways, putting pepper in our mac and cheese. So, I'm very excited. Ooh, got a hint of pepper. This one was just cooked, so it's the hottest. So excited. This is another uh, white cheese. Really, uh, the cheddar mac and cheese, that's the only yellow sauce. The rest are white. I really like white cheeses anyways. I mean, I like cheese, period, but nice big bite. You get a ton of pepper in this mouth. I was going to say you can't taste the pepper at all, but then I got a bite of pepper. Ooh, I love that. Once again, the white cheese sauce is not necessarily distinguishable to me. What makes it distinguishable is the bite of pepper. And I really love that. This is the nutrition and ingredient info, as well as a comparison to original Kraft mac and cheese. Feel free to pause and read if you're interested. I think my ranking is going to be super easy. So, at the bottom, it's not bad, okay? But I'm putting the cheddar mac and cheese. I would really experiment with less of the cheese packet and a little more milk and eating this one fresh off the stove. I think that would make it even better. But it still tastes really great. And then... 
the three white cheese sauces all tasted pretty similar in my opinion. I would put the shells third. I feel like this noodle tasted the most alternative, which I'm used to and I love. But I'm just saying, this one to me tasted the most like, oh, this is, this tastes like it's made of something different. So just be aware of that if you don't like that. Still really good, but out of the three white cheese macaronis, this would be last. I'm going to put mover and shaker in second place. Once again, the white cheese sauce, not super distinguishable, but the bite of pepper is so good. At first I didn't taste it and I was gonna be like, no, this isn't it. But then I got a bite of it. So you just have to make sure it's mixed up really well. So each bite you get some pepper. And in first, twist my parm. Once again, all the white cheese sauces tasted pretty similar, but this one was the creamiest. And I don't know, who doesn't love spiral pasta? Let's discuss goodles one more time because I decided my review would be much better if I tried them for a second time. I did tweak the cooking a little bit. Fill your favorite pot with six cups of water and bring to a boil. The same. Add Goodles macaroni, cook eight to nine minutes, stirring occasionally. That was the same. I like my noodles with a little bit of bite to it, more al dente. So I always go with the lesser option, so eight minutes. Drain well, no rinsing please, and to throw back into the pot. This is what I did differently. In the cooking clips, it looks like I left in enough moisture, right? Every single macaroni was super creamy, but some of them sat longer than others before I did the taste test, and they were no longer mixable. It was really hard. Uh, it's like your typical macaroni. The longer it sits, it loses its creaminess. The same with crab. Overnight, it was even worse. For the Chetty Mac, this one was the worst. Not only did it lose its creaminess, I felt like the packaged cheese, when I used the whole thing, really stuck to the noodles and didn't mix in as a creamy sauce. It was just that powdered cheese stuck to the noodles. Even though it looks like I left in enough moisture, I did not. So this time around, I purposefully left in pasta water, which is what a lot of people and chefs do with pasta dishes anyways. I didn't do it this way, but I would recommend you actually pour some of it into a measuring cup or just any cup and put it aside before you drain it and then add it back in slowly to your taste. I just sort of like drained half the pasta left some of the pasta and water in the pot and put the rest back in. And then added the cheese, added the milk. It says you can add butter for richer flavor, but I never added it because I never thought it needed it. So that's completely up to you. Another thing I did was I let the macaroni sit in that moisture for five minutes. You can do it for longer if you want before serving it. And then when I ate it, it was still hot, super creamy, much improved. The mac and cheese was so much improved that it tasted comparable to Kraft, like directly comparable. So good. I would even move this up my rankings possibly. I liked Shella good, but it didn't necessarily excite me. This one was so good the second time around. I might move it into the third spot and put this one at the bottom. The other two are still at the top just because I like that this one has something different in it. The bites of pepper. And then this one, there's something about the spirals and the blend of cheeses. It's just really good. I think this was my brother's favorite as well. My family did try all of these and everyone really loved them overnight storage. It might look weird in the Tupperware if there's a lot of excess moisture, 
but I am telling you, it is so worth it because that mac and cheese was still creamy the next day. Like, uber creamy. And I could just take a spoon, whether you use a regular spoon or one that drains, and just drain excess moisture. The point is that the overnight storage was so much better. No more sticky, dry macaroni. So easy to mix. And I got some footage that I'm going to pop in here to show you just how creamy it was the next day. Absolutely amazing. So 10 out of 10 recommend that you purposefully leave back some of that pasta water and use it with the milk at the very end. Even if it seems like too much, you can always take it away when you're serving. But it makes a difference when you're actually stirring up the macaroni and when you're storing it. it makes a huge difference. I did add salt along the way as I was cooking, but once I saw the amount of sodium per box, you don't really need to add salt. This is like your typical boxed food. It's going to have a lot of salt in it, so I don't think you actually have to add salt at any point in the cooking. In terms of adding water, do not be afraid that it's going to water down the flavor. I don't think it changed the flavor at all. Even with this one using half the packet of powdered cheese, I didn't think it was watered down at all. Final thoughts. These aren't necessarily healthier if you look at the numbers. They're very similar in terms of calories to a box of Kraft mac and cheese. A box of Kraft can cost as low as 99 cents. These ones are always going to be at least like three to four dollars a piece. So technically craft is cheaper. However, looking at price and ingredients, Goodles obviously made an effort to add real ingredients. I mean the list on here isn't even that long. These ones have way more vitamins and, you know, you see like chickpea protein, nutrients from broccoli, spinach, kale, pumpkin, sweet potato, lots of veggies on here, actual ingredients like buttermilk. On here it's a lot of artificial things that are listed. So even though the like calories and everything are pretty similar. If you really care about what's going into your body, the bodies of your family, your kids, these are the healthier option. They have not only more ingredients, but I, I would say probably better quality ingredients. If you consume a lot of mac and cheese, they do offer a subscription service. And the more boxes you buy at one time, the cheaper they are a piece. I believe, as I was saying, they can be as cheap as 3 to $4 a piece. I believe that's when you buy the highest amount of boxes. So, even though that's still more dollars than buying a box of craft, it's not really that much per box. And it's, I mean, technically a better macaroni. I would say go for it if you're interested. I really enjoyed it. We don't eat a lot of box mac and cheese, so I haven't purchased the subscription, but I would say this is definitely a macaroni that I'll be purchasing every once in a while to keep in the pantry. It is really, really good, especially now that I've figured out how to keep it nice and creamy. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried Goodles. What were your thoughts? Do you feel the same way I do? Did you love them? Did you just like them? Did you hate them? 
let me know. I would love to discuss it with you. If you enjoyed this taste test and review video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that red button down below to subscribe and become a member of my YouTube family. Also, click the bell to turn on your notifications. I will see you in my next video. Bye!